with SNB. The careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care is called stewardship. Watch Stewardship with SNB on Irish TV. Stewardship with SNB. SNB holds you to account. Whether you are in school or not, any opportunity will create for skill acquisition. Please avail yourself that opportunity. But like I said, you can also. You around there, you will know that they have what is called bush packet. Very early in the morning, as early as 4 o'clock down the road. I am a lawyer. And during Let me show me. The man has not cited one project, consensus project, mm. from that 99. If they are there, today. I'm saying they are not much. If they are there in the element, I don't want to join issue with my brother. Watch stewardship with SNB whenever, wherever, however, this time on Irish TV. The 15th day of November 2018. And the program is Stewardship live here in the studios of Real Estate Television, Channel 22, Port Harcourt. Before I tell us who our guest is, today is a big day and we have a big guest in the house. But before I unveil my guest, let's, as usual, have my take. A couple of days from now, political parties will flag off campaigns for the 2019 elections. Candidates will crisscross the length and breadth of the country, presenting their manifestos to the electorates. While some are greenhorns, others are experienced and have made names for themselves. As a prelude to the campaign, stewardship is bringing on board ranking politicians to give hints on what to expect when campaigns officially begin and why their constituents should give them another chance. In River State, 56 parties are filled in candidates for the governorship elections, while all registered parties uh, are fielding candidates for the legislative elections. But then there are candidates and there are candidates. Today on the program, we shall be looking at the topic, expectations of the electorates in 2019. My guest today on the program is indeed a candidate, a politician by practice and an architect by training, a distinguished senator, a commander of the order of Niger CON, a distinguished service star of River State DSSRS, and a justice of the peace, born in Ogu Town in Ogubolo local government area over 60 years ago. My guest started his primary education at St. Martin School, Ogu, in 1965, but was cut short by the Civil War and resumed in 1970, where he obtained the first school living certificate with distinction in 1975. My guest proceeded to government secondary school, Ogu, for his post-primary school education, graduating with grade one in the West African School Certificate Examination in 1980. My guest later on attended the then River State University of Science and Technology, Port Harcourt, where he bagged a Bachelor's of Technology degree in architecture in 1985. My guest is indeed rich in intellectual property. He also obtained a Master's degree in Environmental Engineering from the University of Port Harcourt in 2008. My guest has also obtained certificates in specialized courses overseas. My guest first joined partisan politics in 1987 and was elected chairman of the then Okrika Oyibo Thai Eleme Local Government Council. During the period, he was awarded the best performing local government chairman in 1988. Following the creation of Okrika Local Government Area in April 1989 by the Babangida administration, my guest was elected the first executive chairman of the new local government area. In April 2003, my guest was elected into the House of Representatives, representing Okrika, Okubolo Federal Constituency. In 2007, my guest was again elected for a higher responsibility to represent the Rivers East Constituency at the Senate. He was Chairman, Committee on Solid Minerals, Caucus Leader of the Rivers National Assembly Members. Between 2011 and 2015, my guest was re-elected to the Senate for another four-year term. During the period, he served as Chairman, Senate Committee on Defense and Army. In 2015, he won the popular vote to represent Rivers East Senatorial District, but the victory was quashed 
by the appeal court about a year after. My guest is the People's Democratic Party PDP candidate for Rivers East Natural District for next year's election. He is the Abaji Waritongolu of Ogu, the Igwa Labo of Ogu Kingdom, the Etemwari Omwa Labo of Ogu Community, Distinguished Senator George Thompson II. Distinguished Senator, we're glad to welcome you to the live studios of Rivers Television. Thank you very much. Thank students. you very much. Thank you very much. To so join our conversation, call the number 003341-3360. Or send text messages only to the number 085-347-8400. Join our social platforms on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Stewardship with SMB. You can also watch us live on GoTV, channel 103, Start Time, channel 113. My name is Solomon Nelson Braid, your host. But without you, I can't do it alone. So you will join me at the right time to interact and converse with the Swiss Senator. Once again, let me welcome you again to the studio. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. I want to congratulate you for uh, winning the ticket to represent your people again in the United election. Yes. Mr. Senator, um, you have been in the Senate for two ten years. And one would have thought that um, following the setback you suffered uh, in 2015 or so, 2015, sorry, 2017 or so, uh, you would have relaxed uh, your zeal for partisan politics. What is the driving force that you're coming back again? Uh, you don't need to relax. It is for the service of the people. And because it's for the service of the people, and then the people have seen that you have the capacity to serve them, and you too have assessed yourself that you have the capacity to serve them, then you have to present yourself again once more to them uh, if they will accept you. Now, there are a few things you will learn from this. If I had completed my tenure in the last election, that's, that may be a different story. But I didn't complete. What happens? The people's mandate. The people have already given a mandate. They came out emans, and gave the popular vote. And then through the back door, APC went and took away their mandate from me. Now, the people's mandate, as far as they are concerned in the River East Central District, is still on me. So this next coming out is to assure the people that you sympathize with them because the mandate they gave to you to keep, you are not able to keep it and it was taken away from them. Mm. If you don't come out, it appears actually they didn't give you the mandate. So you, that is why I, I, I come out. Interesting. Uh, but we, we will uh, uh, plead with the studio to assist us with the video and then from there we can we can have follow-up questions. Studio, please assist us. Let's see the video. I am Senator George Thompson Sekibo. I am sure this name is a household name in River State. Because of the circumstances through which I was ejected out of the Senate, uh, the people clamored that should go back and redeem uh, our lost uh, victory. I have taken some time to pause. I have taken some time to think about it. And eventually, I have accepted the call to run. I have come out to run for the Senate for 2019. Why am I running? I must have a parliamentary agenda and a constituency outreach agenda. I believe that the programs contained in this agenda will enable the people to understand that experience accounts in the affairs of men. I have what I call my parliamentary focus. And in the parliamentary focus, I'm trying to shoot at four different agenda, or maybe five, uh, to see if that can bring improvement to my central district, to River State, and then the entire country. In this regard, I intend to carry out or focus on these five parliamentary uh, issues. 
which I think have a big bearing on river states, meaning that whatever affect river state will definitely affect my central district. First is the issue of devolution of constitutional powers. That is the first of my focus. I think there is a great need to reduce the powers in the exclusive legislative list and make it a little bit lighter. When that one is done, River State is going to benefit from it extensively. And if River State is going to benefit from it, River State, my central district, who is virtually most of the urban centers in the, in the state, that means Padaka will benefit, Obiapa will benefit, Ikwere will benefit, Emawa will benefit, Okrika will benefit, Ogubolo will benefit, Eche will benefit, and Omuma will benefit because they all they are like arteries to our capital city, Port Harcourt. Now, why do we want it? We want it because of my experiences. The next issue is physical federalism. Physical federalism is very important for the people of River State. Like I've said before, if River State has a huge share of revenue, then it means that my central district will also have a huge share. It's, it follows in that way. It is my belief that if we are trying to practice physical federalism, it will bring more development to my state because as a major oil producer in the country, it means that we are also going to get uh, more opportunities of making more money. Such programs are not, are not achieved by one person. But one person can steer the ship and others will jump and both will work together and get that done properly. The third agenda is a remediation of the Niger Delta degraded environment. Of course, I don't want to talk much on this one. Today, every person in River City will know that our waterways are very, very polluted. So yeah. we must come fast for the cleaning up of the Niger Delta region. Mr. Wesereto, I'm sure you never expected that. I'm yeah, that I'm that's the focus of this program. We go all out to I'm, I'm do our research. I'm shocked. Yes. I'm very shocked. Yes. Uh, I want to ask you, it has saved me of the breath to ask you all of the questions I wanted to ask you about your manifesto and all of that. You have told reverse people and of course our viewers. But one thing is important. How do you fancy your chances of winning this election? Uh, first, no individual candidate wins an election. It is the party that actually wins the election, even though the party has to produce somebody on its platform. PDP, River State is a PDP state. Uh, that we know. Don't mind about the rantings of some people. River State is a PDP state. And uh, as a PDP state, our governor, who is leader of the PDP in River State, has done extremely very well. I'm sure we'll talk about that yes, later. And because that has been done, it has endeared the minds of the people towards PDP. So if we now bring a credible candidate and place on that platform with a party that has worked very well in the state, with a credible candidate on that platform, we are going to win. That is first. Second issue, I've been to the Senate three times. Each of the time, some other persons, other candidates contested against me. And there has been no time that my vote difference with those who oppose me have never been 70%. So it is like a track record, including the last one, which was taken from the back door. So that since that is, has been, I've been consistent with the time, because of the first factor I said about uh, River State being a PDP state, and then a second factor, not just a PDP state, but the leader of the party in the state has done extremely very well. So we have now even a, an added advantage. In 2015, when we went there, we had no governor, so we cannot say this is what our governor has done before, or this is what our party has done before. But today, in virtually every community, the weaker administration has touched base with them as appended signature in virtually every community. Mm -hmm. So with all this hope, and again, my peer degree, you know, having been there before, we never experienced another one. Mm -hmm. I believe that our people will still give me the mandate to go and present them. 
the story said that what's your relationship with your people? It's a charity begins at home. Uh, we know that Rivers East Electoral District comprises of about five to six uh, local government. Am I correct? Eight local government areas. Could you, could you refresh our memory? Eight local government areas. Could you refresh our memory by enumerating them? We have Obiapo. We have we have, we Padako, have Padako, Padako City local government. We have Iquiri. We have Obiapo. Yes. We have Iquiri. Yes. We have Emawa. Yes. We have Eche. Eche. We have Omoma. Ogubulu. We have Okrika. Okay. We have a good that is the order they, they go. Okay. Now, uh, uh, across this um, no, number of local government areas, uh, how close are you to the people? How accessible uh, are you to the people? You see, that, that but before you take that question, let's call one of your friends and associates who um, they want to tell us uh, a few things about uh, you. Let's, 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 hear, let's hear one of your associates. He is one of your constituents, of course, in your local government area. Let's hear him. Hello? Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Solomon Nelson Braid. I am the anchor man on the program Stewardship Live here in the studios of Riverside Television. My guest today on the program is the distinguished senator uh, George Sekibo, uh, who has represented the Rivers East Electoral District uh, three three times, and it's about going back to uh, the Senate again. You are the local government chairman of Ogubolo, Ogubolo and of course that's his uh, immediate constituency. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Senator Sakibo. Why do you think he's going back to the Senate? Is he accessible to the people? You know, you know in our place, when you cook food, and the food is old, that is the time it is very, very interesting. Take it again. When you cook food. Yes. All food, all soup, all soup yes. is the one that is sweeter. Yes. Are we on, so, to, cap are we on to Captain uh, uh, Erasmus Victor, Chairman of Gubolo Local Government Area? Yes. You, oh. are, you are on to name Captain Erasmus Victor, Executive Re Chairman of Ogubolo local government area. Yes, could you relate that analogy to what we're talking about here? Is it old soup? Did what? Old soup. When you keep old soup for a long time, it becomes sweeter than any one that you cook fresh. Okay. Yes, and it, it comes to say that old wine is always better than new wine. Okay. Yes. So, let it just Thompson, Sekibo, George Thompson, Sekibo. It's an old soup, and it's also an old wine. So it's very tasty. It's sweeter than a new wine. Oh, I see. That's why we want to encourage him that we must go back to this debate. Now, now uh, uh, Chairman of Gubolo Local Government Area, uh, one would have thought that uh, given the setback he suffered in the previous time, um, he would have relaxed his beat to go back to the Senate. Uh, why do you think that uh, he has to go back again? You are his local government chairman. Yes, he, he has to go back. You know when he left, when he left that place, it was unceremonious. Okay. And for his caliber, we have to prove to people that that is unceremonious. You know, living was not the way we expected it. We want him to come complete that tenure that we did not complete. That's why we want to go back. Uh, Chairman of Gubolo, one more question before we, 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 draw, we, we stop the call. Uh, PVC is something that is very important for the citizens to go to the, the ballot with. How far have you sensitized the people? Because you are his local government chairman. And I believe that you must be in touch with him regularly uh, to talk about um, the welfare of the local government area. And of course, uh, citizens' participation in the forthcoming election. How far have you sensitized the people? Yes, I have, I have, of course, from the beginning of the end of the, of the restoration, since so guys, my people, you know, ours is the local environment. Okay. So we have to have clients to inform people that this, everything that has been gotten must be collected. We have pasted all of them on the, on the registered, on notice boards on the houses and so on. All of them have got to check and we have told them that any time they experience any mistake in their, in their data, that they must report back so that they can be corrected. 
When we have talked that PPCs are the instrument of it, they have to know who is going to govern them because they have to determine who is going to govern them. So, uh, uh, Chairman of Gobolo Local Government Area, are, are you so in one sentence? Could you tell us uh, what you intend to do for uh, your party and, of course, the district senator who is going back to the Senate uh, uh, just before the elections? What What are the plans on ground? Given the fact that the opposition is always there to do what they do to uh, quash uh, people's ambitions, we want we want the all progressive Congress. To, to make sure, to want them to make sure that they do not bring violence into the elections. Because we know that a man in the in Solomon analogy, the two women that uh, were dragging uh, a child, okay. the one that never had a child was on the opinion that that child was divided. Mm. The one that had the child said that the child should not be divided. We that are on ground do not want any violence. They that are on ground are making sure that there is violence. We want to tell them that they do not bring violence into the elections because we are aware in the free and fair atmosphere we will certainly defeat them. And by defeating them, we are going to bring back Thompson Secretary, Senator, uh, Senator uh, George Thompson Secretary, and the Governor. Governor, the of in 2019 to finish their business. Chairman of the area, retired Captain Rasmus Victor, thank you so much for your contributions on the, pro on the program. If there's any need to call you back, we will, we will uh, do well to call you back. Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. That was your local government chairman. I, I was wondering, because they say charity begins at home, and when the distinguished senator, the Thompson Secretary, wants to go back, we want to look at what his home front is like. Now, that is Ogubolo. What is it like in Obiapo? What is it like in Okrika? What is it like in Equiri? What is it like in Portacot? Could you just, in, in summary, tell us you, what your support base is like? Yes, I will not uh, uh, mention them. But do you agree with the uh, by, by, uh, Yeah, I agree with him. Mm -hmm. I agree with him. I will not mention them by their local government. Mm -hmm. But I know of one thing. That one thing is that I am close to my constituent. I am in touch with them, I am at home with them, and it is on their agreement and encouragement I am now contesting. So if I am contesting based on their own agreement, then it is well certain that there is a cordial relationship. That is the meaning. No, uh, this one, sir, uh, oftentimes uh, most candidates claim that uh, uh, they, they, are, they, are, they are people called on them to contest. Any candidate, political person, uh, candidate you interview will say, my people, my people want me to come. Does it mean that candidates do not have a personal ambition? <laughs> this, is, this is a very good question. Yes. But let me relate it to myself. Let me not talk about that people. Well, I would, I would talk about that people when I come for other people's program, but today is my own. Mm. Now, in 1987, around August, I was called to come and contest the chairmanship position of my local government area. Then, mm. Okrika Oyibota, Elema local government. I just finished my NYSC and I was a freelance architect. Yeah. So there was no way I could think about going for an election. And whatever were their views, they, I said they conscripted me, you know, because somehow I dodged it for some time, but I, I couldn't dodge it forever. So they were able to get me, and then I, I started to contest and uh, I won the election. That was the first one. Yeah. The second one, the House of Representatives. I was already an advisor to the governor of River State on project. And I think I was doing very well. My boss was close to me and he lost me. And then the Okrika and Ogubolo uh, constituency leadership came to me and said, please, can you leave this environment and go to Abuja and present us? Actually, I refused. I didn't want to go. I went to my boss and discussed with him. Eventually, he too approved it. And then the late, uh, the late uh, A.K. Dikibo, Chief A.K. Dikibo, uh, when ha he had the story, brought forth money that time to enable me to buy my, my intent form and also the nomination form. So uh, why, why am I saying this one? You see that all, in all these cases, people encourage me 
and ask me to go. Now, because somehow you also have the capacity, and somehow you are also grassroots based, somehow you know, the people you are in touch with the people. When such a clarion call comes and then you accept it, you become easily sellable to them. And it is not always the case that you impose yourself on our people. By our local tradition in many of the communities in River State, no chief makes himself. No chiefs will come out and say, I want to be a chief. It is the people that will come out and say, we want you to be our chief now. In short, from the stories we had, like the coronation of Amanabo in our place, in the Okrika area, Kalaba area, and all that one. The Amanabo will even run away, say he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to die early and all that. They will search for him, go and catch him wherever he is, bring him and crown him and make him the Amanabo. So it is not a strange news that a, 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 a somebody was either asked to or lobbied to or invited to come and go and present the people. It's a better way of doing it than individuals who for their selfish interests want to bring in money and force and power and uh, talkery to capture a seat from, from the people. When the people say you should go, it means that you are the people's candidate. You are not your own personal candidate. So whatever you are doing, you are also cautious whether they will be hungry. And when they hungry, when so they the, get angry, the people's uh, 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 the people's wish is in tandem with your personal wish. Somehow, 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 yes. But, but for, for instance, when I went to the city for the first time, I had already taken my phone for House of Reps, and I was I had been returned on the post. I was the only one in my constituency. But later, uh, the party leadership say. Can you replace this one for us? We want you to go for for the Senate. Mm. I said, give me one week to think about it. I thought about it and I accepted and I went and got the form. So my first interview in the Senate was not because I struggled to be a senator, but I was asked to come and be a senator and present them effectively mm. because they have seen my pedigree and the way I'd work with the people. Mm. So personal interest and the people's interest, they tally. They tally. Thank you so much. We'll mm. take a short break and then when we'll come back, the senator will tell us um, what he did with his constituency money throughout the third term, the three times he went to the Senate. That will be after the break. Stay with us. Stewardship with SNB. SNB. SNB holds you to account. Whether you are in school or not, any opportunity will create for skill acquisition. Please avail yourself that opportunity. But like I said, you can you also around there, you know that they have what is called bush market. Very early in the morning, as early as four o'clock down the road. Yeah, I'm a lawyer. And doing Let me show me. The man has not cited one project, consensus project. Mm. From that night. If they are there today, I'm saying they are not much. If they are there in the element, I don't want to join issue with my brother. Watch stewardship with S and B. Whenever, wherever, however, this time on RSTV. With SNB. If you have just joined us, you're watching uh, Stewardship on the program on River State Television, Channel 22, Port Harcourt. And my guest in the studio is the distinguished Senator George Thompson Sekibo. The Senator represent, he represented Rivers East, Senatorial District, and of course, he recently got his party's ticket or not to go back to the Senate to represent. Rivers East. The Stone Senator, once again, welcome to the studio. Thank you very yes, much. You were a ranking senator when you were uh, at the floor of the House. Uh, what did you do with your constituency project money? Now, first of all, I want to give a clarification. If I just answer your question directly, it will appear I was giving some cash as constituency money to bring back home and do something with. No. The constituency money, the money is, allocated is, to is, an, is, is, an, is an allocation mm -hmm. to every member of the National Assembly, including the House of Representatives. And then you nominate or suggest ways you want the money to be used. That money can't be given to you. It is not given to individuals. It is enlisted in the budget based on what you want it to be used for. And then an MDA of government is choosing, a ministry, department of agency of government is choosing 
where the money is domiciled. And then when they awarded the contract, when the budget funds are, are, are released, and then uh, they are executing uh, the budget, uh, often, most often times, people don't have the luck. But when, if you are lucky, your project will be awarded and it will be executed. Mm -hmm. You know. So in my own case, I have gotten some quite a number of opportunities when my suggestions in the budget are awarded because of where they are domiciled. That is why you will hear I have done uh, widows empowerment programs mm. several times. The last one was about 2,000 women, and that was a huge sum of money, you know. And then we have done training of students in tertiary institutions. I know I have trained over 25 persons from year one to year five. Uh -huh. And then later we gave postgraduate scholarship to about 50 persons because on, on academics. And then over 200 orphan students, tertiary stu institutions, indigenous students, we give them bursaries to also su support them. That is just on the one hand. I'm sure you, you had about early last year or sometime, we came and distributed transformers to my, the LGAs in my central district. Mm -hmm. Some of them are having some peculiar problems, so we did that one. In 2014, uh, 2012, thereabout, at in my own community in Nogu, there was a massive distribution of uh, empowerment equipment, mm -hmm. ranging from uh, fridges, computers, printers, generating plant, and, and a bike, and all that, give to you know, the constituents from all the local government areas. They came down to that place, mm -hmm. and then have have theirs. And then you, I'm sure you must have heard of my uh, medical outreach program, okay. where we have a mobile clinic, and we move from one LGA to LGA. Okay. Before, well, within your central before, district. Yeah, within the central district. Now, before that one commenced, there was one that was done uh, that uh, Professor Chini mm -hmm. is, is a medical uh, director at uh, University Teaching Hospital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he organized it, and Dr. Purple. One Dr. Wokuma is a surgeon, Dr. Pepper is a high surgeon, you know. They came to assist. And uh, I know that more than 50, 60 persons were operated on their eyes. And a quite number of persons, over a hundred, so many, were operated for other anias or far broad or other ailments. Mm -hmm. And then general medical attention. Now it was after this program we now take a tour of the local government areas. Mm -hmm. We went from LGA to LGA with doctors without borders. Okay. We engaged doctors without borders to help us. We got, a, we got a mobile bus, equip it, and then they move from one LGA to another LGA. Where they need to have carried operations, they give the people a particular date, convey them to a place, to a mini clinic, and carry the operation. In that program, I think close to 150 persons were operated. It ran twice. The first one was about for about two months. The other one was about for three months. You know, These are all part of consensus project. There are so many that they can mention. Now, consensus projects are some a little bit different from uh, a, cons a, a, a parliamentarian attracting project to his own place. It's, it's, it's a quite different thing. Mm -hmm. Somehow, if you are lucky, again, you can, you can include programs in the budget, and uh, if there are contractors that are willing to do that kind of job, not you go to look for them. Mm -hmm. Normally, the federal government uh, budget is an open document, and people see it, and they, they vow for it, and they get it. Those ones are also executed. So in some places, one can say we have brought in one or two things to the central district. But the, the Supreme Senator, uh, it is on record that you were a very active member when you were in the Senate. Very, very active. Maybe we can just refresh our memories and the memories of our viewers of some of your activities in the Senate. The studio, please assist us. You know, I'm only one year today in the Senate. I'm not two years. <laughs> six months in the Senate, six months in the Senate in December 2015, enemies of darkness fabricated something, and then I was sent out back to the field. And I came back to the general. Well, I, I, I think it is not only one year than outside the Senate. And I'm very happy with all my colleagues for standing behind me when I was in trouble. Because it was not just PDP so that standing behind me. This machine that was allocated to me on that day was preserved yes. for 12 calendar months. Yeah. Until I came back and I was made to sit on it again. Yeah. If you are not a good person, if you are not a good leader, if you are a leader who is selective, 
in our town this to somebody else. You even, you even preserve my committee for one full year. And I came back and came to me. Okay. And I thank you. In short, if I know that we can invite other people to come, I would have come my wife to come with me today to stand by me and thank you. Yes. Because it is not an easy thing without hatred, without selection, without discrimination, you just did that for me. And if you do it for me, I believe that you did it for Nigerians. Because they are doing what you think is the truth. Mr. President, having said very well, having said this, Mr. President, I want to salute you. When you came to the Senate in the last Senate, and then I heard you want to become Senate President, I was shocked. I said, can you just come from the executive? And then you want to come and be a legislator, not just a legislator, you want to lead those who are legislators from the executive. We wash you while well, he didn't push further. Then in the second term, you came out, came out fully. And those of us who are your friends in PDP, knowing that you are ours, you are, you are, you are the same. That's what they said before us and me. While we are doing very well, please, we must be allowed to continue with that trend. When in every day, at the breaking of the day, DSP's house will be ransacked and they may be run out to hurt himself for three, four days. In the next day, they are looking for Duda. The next day, they are looking for our minority leader. The next day, they are looking for Abaribe. The next day, they are looking for this one. We are supporting the government. We are fighting corruption ourselves. And that is why today, I don't know how much you are paying me. My salary has been so slimmed down. I'm macheting. My tummy was bigger before. But we agree with you, even in starvation, we will stand by Nigeria. Why we are doing that one? They should allow us to be focused. They should not harass us. We are not fighting any institution. Thank God that our former presiding officers here, on the floor of this Senate, you can get up and talk what you think is wrong, what you think is right. You don't hold a meeting with anybody to come and say you are good. You come out and say the way you see it. That does not Well, the still senator, what does that remind you? It, it, it reminds me of my activities on the floor of the city. Yes, yes. Uh, that, that, particular, that particular one where you said you don't know what your salary is. Your stomach was bigger than this. Now you are flat. Yes. Tell us a little bit about it. And you know, you kept talking about budget. What is the problem with Nigerian budget? And of course, the, the, the writers or authors or those who prepare Nigerian budget, uh, where before, before and after they bring it to the Senate, what has been this ding dong about budget uh, slash, budget padding, budget whatever. When you go back, what do you intend to do uh, considering your previous rules and of course what you intend to do when you go in again? Yeah, first let me take the, the, the first issue. Uh, I, I know that uh, the normal senator's uh, salary plus or group allowance and blah 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 was now under something thousand another. But during Bukula Saraki's initial takeoff, there was an agreement that this thing be called down by about 25 percent. So every senator's salaries were called down by 25 percent. Why did they do so? They did so because the federal government, the Buhari Leader Administration, requested for such a change. We agreed with them. And uh, it is because of that agreement that is why that money was called down. Mm. All right. Uh, they didn't get to slim down. Uh, it, 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 it did. It did. If uh, if uh, if your, if, your, if your, I was having your young nomi slim down or your pocket. But I was there that you see my stomach was slimming down, and, and they were laughing. That that was true. So it means I was slimming down. Uh, if you <laughs> if you are eating five cups of garlic before, now you are eating uh, three cups. Definitely, you will come down in weight. You know. So, it, uh, but that is not the issue. When you talk about the budget. Um, the national budget normally comes in this form. Mm. When it comes in, maybe about most time, 70, 72 percent mm. would be for recurrent expenditure. Yeah. Recurrent expenditure includes the overhead and the personal cost. Now, the remaining, sometime between 27, 30, maybe 31, 
will be allocated for capital project. Now, there is a witch, a witch, I don't know where it comes from, mm. that affect the Nigerian budget not to be implemented early enough every year. Oftentimes, the budget will be approved maybe in May or sometimes in June. That is half of the year, uh, uh, the year has gone. Mm. And after that has been done, then they will now start to look out for money for uh, carrying out for capital project. The capital project component of the budget is what actually the people benefit from. The recurrent expenditure is actually for the running of government and payment of salaries for government workers. So that is where, that is where the, the, the problem comes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about government, a padding of budget, that's a new technology that came in recently after I left the Senate. Mm -hmm. But it's not, no one part any budget. Well, the, the, the Constitution gave the power to the National Assembly or to the legisl legislature to prepare the budget and approve the budget. For you to approve, it means you have to vet. If they give you a document to approve, you have to vet. Now, when vetting this document, if you observe that certain issues raised in the budget are not in tandem with the desire of the people on ground, because we represent the people, mm -hmm. there will be a need to either do adjustment or completely eliminate such projects and put other ones that are more uh, needed for uh, the people. Mr. Senator, talking about budget, uh, only yesterday, one of the national newspapers reported that the federal government borrowed over two trillion naira to fund the 2017 budget uh, it, it quoted the dmo uh, uh, to have uh, also uh, given that information and said this amount was borrowed from both the domestic and the foreign debt markets mm -hmm. are you worried with this borrowing i am worried what do you intend to change I, go? I i i am worried it is not it is not one person's matter it is the senate matter it is the National Assembly matter. Because after any time, the state may agree on something, and if the House of Reps reject that suggestion, mm. it goes in vain, because there are 360 persons, and the state is only 109. And if there is a major disagreement, we all meet together and take a decision by vote. So look at a class that is a 360 persons, and we are class only 109, mm. and we are voting on an issue. Assuming all the 109 agree on one thing, and all the 360 agree on one thing. Definitely, the 100 and I will go out of that that race. So I'm 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 getting worried. I'm getting worried because uh, since Buhari came in, he has borrowed more money in two years. He has borrowed more money than from President Obasanjo to Good Luck Jonathan. So you will see that they have spent 16 years before he came in. In 16 years. They, they borrowed less money than what he has borrowed in just two years. And of course, you know, when a passenger came in, there was this Paris fund. There was negotiation and, and, and dialogue, and eventually they came to an agreement, and that money was, some was paid and it was written off. Now, we started on that platform. Yaradua came in. Jonathan came in. Jonathan was building on our foreign reserve before Buhari came in. Now, if you compare the little foreign reserves that we have to what they have borrowed, Nigeria needs maybe 10, 20 years to, to repay. Re to recover. To recover. Oh, I see. Well, uh, you, you were chairman of the committee on um, army, and of course, defense and army. Uh, uh, what, what, what did you see? What was the biggest challenge that confronted you that time? But just before we, we you, you say something on that uh, question, let's take this call. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Stewardship, live Hello, from the studios of Riverside Television. Mr. Who? I'm okay, Joseph. Mr. Okay, Joseph, go on. We have the distinguished senator here with us. Yeah, I just want to ask you a question. Go on. I want to ask you, in Ogubolo and Ogubika local government area, what are the storms as a senator for the Thank you. Thank you. Over to you. This is a very, very interesting question. Mm -hmm. I will start from Ogubolo. The Ogu people live on an island that is surrounded by swampy, wet soil, mm -hmm. mangrove soil. And I think that one of the higher desire of every Ogu man is to get land. Within my period in the Senate, I have been able to attract over 250 hectares of land 
that had been sandfield reclaimed reclaimed sandfield and i don't know whether this adokiju service is from ugu if it's from ugu i'm sure we get a land in that place I see. because virtually every young person that uh, lives in ugu, every community you know the, co the community has chiefdoms mm. uh, these lands are shared by the chiefs and given to all these people now that is an achievement the entire community as a whole wouldn't be able to achieve their contributing money for 300 years. So you will not say that it was not a big achievement. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about the smaller, smaller, smaller ones. Mm -hmm. In Okrika local government area, I was able to attract um, a bridge that will link ATC and Uche Street in Portacourt so that our people will have easier access. Okay, a, a Chase Street in Diobo. A Chase Street in Bulukiri. Okay. A Chue Street, a Chue Street, a Street in Burukiri okay. to ATC okay. in Okrika. Okay. Under five minutes, we are in Okrika. Instead of driving through all this length period. Now, that contract was awarded and it was also being carried out. The pals are there. If you go there, you will see them. It was stopped. And I have challenged the chiefs, I have challenged some young men. So I want Adoki to also go and find out why was it stopped? Who was the contractor? Why did it stop? How, well, how much money have they paid to him? Why didn't he continue? Mm -hmm. We must have a problem that we now have to solve it. That is one. The other issue is that I was able to attract um, over 200 hectares of land at Ekere Kana for reclamation. Mm -hmm. At Ekere Kana Bay for reclamation. Mm -hmm. The job was awarded. Where is Ekere Kana Bay? Ekere Kana is just, if you are, if you are going to Ekere Kana, when you climb the old bridge, mm -hmm. if you climb the old bridge, mm -hmm. On your left hand side, okay. uh, just beyond uh, OGS, OGS okay. and all that suburb. And the job started and also stopped. Uh, they should find out why did, why did the job stop. Because you see, the legislator work is to attract, lobby, get something and put in the budget. Mm. That is where he, where it stopped. Who they give and the contract the, to? People's representative. Did you also make effort to find out? I I have I, I, I found out. I have done my findings. Mm. But the issue is that they should do their findings as well. Their findings is very important because if a man is buying you a vehicle, and then the vehicle is brought to your home domain this evening, tomorrow morning you don't you don't understand it again. Mm. You don't have won't ask question. And they, and they and they and they stay docile. I see it doesn't concern them. Now if you have gotten one and you are not caring about it. You are talking about other, 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 other things. Of course, the central district is very, is very big. Mm. You, you get me? It's very big. So I think that for these two LGs, he asks, we have done abundantly much for the LGs. Well, we'll take more calls. Um, we were talking about uh, your role when you were chairman of the Committee on Defense and Army. Uh, what was your biggest challenge? Because that was when uh, President Jonathan was the president of the country. And uh, the popular notion then was that uh, the military was uh, was not properly funded uh, which gave rise to insurgency in the uh, northeast and of course some parts of Niger Delta and all of that was it poor funding or there was corruption no no, no. the question is, 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 a com is the question is service in the conflict it is not was poor, it, poor it is not poor funding that brought about the Boko Haram mm. no Boko Haram has come into existence from before Jonathan became president but it was not the operations were not as heavy as what he came to meet now when he come to me the question should have been when he came to meet was he funding it very well but what was uh, your biggest challenge uh, when you were chairman uh, the yes my biggest challenge was that there weren't enough equipment to fight the Boko Haram it was not monetary it was it, no, no, it's, still, it's still monetary because equipments are bought with money <laughs> they, they don't borrow them because so that was <coughs> no no it's not poor funding Nations don't get the equipment today to fight today's battle. Nations get the equipment yesterday, yesteryears, and so on. And the equipment will be on ground. And then if there's a confrontation, they use it to confront the situation. Mm -hmm. You cannot buy an aircraft, for instance, for, to fight the Boko Haram and get it in six months. No. Sometimes aircraft are built in one or two years before they give it to you. So if Boko Haram is fighting in them, and they want a, 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 a fatter aircraft, mm -hmm. then you die, even, if, even if you have the funds, and you pay for it now, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. What happens was this. During the military regime, there was an embargo on military equipment, either to revive them, to sustain them, or rehabilitate them, or service them. Mm -hmm. They put 
all military equipment in prison. Okay. So when even our passenger came, he did not lift it up. Yaradua came, there was skirmishes here and there. Mm. But it was during Jonathan regime that that door was opened. That look, every equipment you had, you can service it. Mm. Now look at you, that you have kept a military artillery for uh, maybe 10, 15 years or 20 years without servicing. And you want to service it now. It becomes a difficult thing. So there was not actually enough equipment to fight the Boko Haram. Good Lord John did, did so much. He brought in funds and equipment we are ordered. You mm. will hear when President Buhari came in the first time that he went and received some equipment that we ordered. They didn't order for this equipment. Mm. These were equipment that we ordered by President Good Lord Ebele Jonathan. And as I've said before, mm. even raffle, even if ordinary raffle you want to buy for military operations, you're not, you're not going to buy one or two. So you can say, just tell me two. Maybe you buy in the hundreds or maybe in the thousands. You place order for um, six months, one year, then they, they supply, supply them to you. That was where I think we had the first problem. Okay. The other problem again is also, uh, of course, uh, generally the issue is funding. Funding because if you need a particular type of vehicle for warfare and you don't have it, maybe you're using ordinary pickup. You are exposing your soldiers, you know. Mm -hmm. So there are all these problems that Good Luck was able to manage to put together. And you will also recall, before Good Luck left office, before Good Luck left office, he was able to normalize the situation. And then you also had the story that uh, most of the LG that were seized by the local, uh, by, or captured by the Boko Haramis mm -hmm. have been recovered. Mm -hmm. That was made known to us. Okay. Uh, 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 we want to play with the, sh uh, the studio to play us... Uh, one last video, and then uh, we, we can begin to wrap up uh, uh, with this program. Studio, please assist us with the video there, uh, where the distinguished senator was seen uh, uh, to be addressing uh, a gathering of party faithful, and of course drumming support for the incumbent governor to come back again. Studio, please assist us. that you have brought to us as a state, as a country, both locally and internationally. That Your Excellency, Chief Barrister Ezewon Nyesong Wike, C-O-N, run for the governorship seat of River State in 2019. I so move on behalf of the people of Rivers East Senatorial District. Here yeah, to second the motion, as move by Honorable O.K. Shinda, I so second. Give us East Senatorial Zone, I'm proud of you. Your Excellency, you have not only paid the salaries of workers, you have not only done projects in, in, in all over River State, but you are now called Mr. Project. We want you to come back and take on the affairs of the state. Your Excellency, we are delighted that what we see and say about you have been acknowledged beyond our central district to other parts of the state and the length and breadth of the country and even by the international community. The governor has performed, will be asked to run, and we are solidly behind our governor, not just in this Rivers East Senatorial District, but throughout River states, including all the non-indigenous that are in our midst. We are saying to the governor, you have done well, we are proud of you, you've represented us well, and we are going to back you 
in your second term. That is the message you want to send clearly. I bring you goodwill from the youths of River State. They have asked me, Your Excellency, to tell you that we have seen the difference between light and darkness. And therefore, they have told me to urge you to run for a second time in office. Mr. Senator, we watched that video where various stakeholders in your senatorial district uh, were calling on the governor, in fact, endorsing him to contest. You're also aware that very recently, uh, the Rivers Ejo, uh, under the aegis of the Rivers Ejo Forum, uh, endorsed the incumbent governor for a second term. Uh, and and, um, and um, having one, uh, in, in spite of the fact that they have one of their own uh, uh, on the other side of the, of the divide, contesting for the same seat. Why, why this position? Uh, you know that in 2015, the job people met, precisely January 17 or thereabout, the job people met and took a decision. And our decision was based on this principle, the principle of the definition of an Ejo man. So we ask who is an Ejo man. Now, publicly, mm. Jesus called somebody a good Samaritan who was not an Israelite. Mm. He was passing by and saw a man that was had been bastardized and was on the, on the, on the ground dying. Mm. A priest saw him, a liver saw him, they abandoned him. He took him and gave him his support. Mm. Jesus termed this man as a good Samaritan. A good Samaritan, even though he was not in the priesthood family, for the priesthood family. We are supposed to show more mercy and kindness. Now, in 2015, the job people we are standing by Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan to go back as the president of the country. Because that was the first time and a job son has gone to that office on behalf of all of us. Either Goodluck Jonathan was good, it was bad, it, it is irrelevant. As far as the job people we are concerned, it is an job term. So he must complete his four years. And then a group of people from River State came up and fought Goodluck Jonathan. They were led by the former governor, Ruti Miyamichi, and then all sorts of people. And uh, they brought somebody, Nakuku Peter Sa, to be, who is at the Johnson, to also run side by side with uh, Yenson Wiki. Now, which one do the job people prefer more? Is it the president or <laughs> a governor? For the job people, they need the head of the fish. So we need the head of the fish. And whoever is in the battleship of that head of the fish is our person. So, yes, we that came in and confronted those who were confronting our brother, beating him up. He that came in to pick him up from the ground and give him solace. As far as we are concerned, by the job definition, he was his brother's keeper. So, he was a good, good Samaritan and a good job man. Mm -hmm. So, in the spirit of a zonism, a zonism, he became our candidate. That was how he became our candidate. And we are also aware that yes, we will not go in for only one tenor. He will go in for two terms, as the condition provides. Mm. He has fought for us. He did all he could to protect and preserve our son on the seat. Unfortunately, it was not one man's battle. We were not able to get him back. Mm. Now, today, they have come. They are bringing somebody as an adjust son. Who will give us an adjust son? Is it another man that will give us an adjust son, that this is an adjust son, go and vote for him? Or the job people will not see to agree this is an adjust son that will vote for this person? So you don't stay from somewhere else from some other tribe and come and detect to us that this is an German, so vote for this German. The job people know their own. We know those who are job people, who were born in the job land, who were bred up, brought up in the job land, who school in the job schools, who knows their terrain, who swam in their, in their rivers, and who also pick Prevencos and Esamu and all that one. Mm. We don't want people that we are born maybe in London, or maybe in Sierra Leone, or maybe in Cameroon, wherever, and then by business connection, they come to River State, and become a job people, mm -hmm. and then we then represent the job people. Mm -hmm. That is one issue. There's the second issue is that Nyenson Wiki, who is an adjust son now, because 2015 we adopted him as an adjust son. By adoption. By adoption. So if you adopt a child four years ago, you give him all privileges. All the privileges. So he's an adjust son. So the job people went and said, Look, you, you are a son. For the past three years, you have done very well. And based on this antecedent, we want to give you more leverage 
to go and stay for the remaining uh, four years. Mm. I think it's a good, uh, it's a good decision. Mm. So the job people are supporting him. Now, outside that one, outside that one, the governor of River State, mm. Yensom, is the one we has done very well. This attestation is not only from lawmakers like who you will say are very close to him, but former governors like Dr. P. Dudley said that even when he was governor, he spoke on the, to the press that even when he was a governor, he never believed that such thing can be done that this young man is venturing into. Today, in the next couple of months, you will drive from Podako to Opobo. In the next couple of months, you are going to hand on it. These are fees that are, 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 are not thought that could be could be could be achieved. Let's talk about the time is of a sense that is not uh, very friendly. I wish we had more time. Yes, I wish we had more time to, to reel out some of the projects of the government and all of that. But uh, just before we draw the curtains, do you have confidence in the police, INEC, and the judiciary? You have been a victim of circumstance in the last uh, election. I wish I wish you separate the components mm. so I can answer very well. I don't have confidence. Because elections of I don't have I don't elections. have confidence in the police. I don't have confidence in INEC. Do you have confidence in the judiciary? Uh, because of the peculiar situation, mm. I, I, tend to, I tend to say yes. Thank you so much. Well, that will be uh, the size of our package this week on the program Stewardship. We want to thank you so much for participating. And for those of you who called and couldn't pick your calls, we sincerely apologize because we're trying to manage our time very well. We do believe that when next this program comes on board, We'll pick all calls and, of course, all text messages. To the Senator, we want to thank you so much for finding time to be with us here in the studio. Thank you. Yes, thank we you, wish thank you, you thank good thank luck. You. Thank, in, you thank you very to much. Thank you To my colleagues who have been pressing the right buttons here, I want to thank you so much for doing what you know best. My name is Solomon Nelson Brait, signing off to bring you another big guest. We'll meet again next week, same time. Bye-bye. Stewardship with SNB.